Where the light comes from. My name is Matthew Rissler, and I'm interviewing Anthony Benice. It is January 25, 2002. We are at Christ the King School in Anthony, what branch of service were you in during the war? My son. What were the circumstances for your enlistment? Well, I was drafted, and uh, there was a war. What unit, what unit were you assigned to? U.S. Army. What was your highest rank held? Staff Sergeant. What wars, theaters, campaigns, or locations were you in? Well, the war was World War II. It was in the European theater of operations. And I was in four different campaigns. You want me to tell you what they were? Yes, okay. That was the Northern France. Uh, the Ardennes, the Rhineland, and Central Europe. What were your general duties, skills, or ratings? My duty was, I was a staff sergeant and I was a uh, squad leader, which consists of 12 men. Did you have combat service? Yes. And when were you first under fire? November 1944. What were your feelings in combat? Scared most of the time. <laughs> okay, Matt, you got a good chance here. When were you first under fire? I think it was November 1945. No, 44. 44, 1944. Okay, um, I was in France. What were your feelings in combat? Oh, it was pretty hard to find, but I guess I was scared sometimes, and most of the time I wasn't. Did you receive any injuries, wounds, or illnesses? Oh, uh, I was wounded. In, in March of uh, 45. And what part of where were you wounded? Uh, I think it was in Germany, but I'm not sure. What part of your body? Oh, yeah, I got, I got uh, shrapnel wounds in the, in the arm and in the head. Were you captured at all? Then? No, I wasn't. What was daily life like? Well, uh, most of the time you were sitting or moving. And, uh, not, nothing special. When you were sitting, you would dug a hole and got in. And when you moved, you just moved to another position, you dug a hole there and got in. Did your equipment work well? Yes. How is it compared to the enemy? Well, I was an infantry soldier, and I can say that the primary weapon for an infantryman was a rifle, and the rifle we had was much superior than the rifle of the Germans had. We had a, they had a bolt action rifle, and we had a, what, our, our rifle was semi-automatic. All you had to do was press the trigger and it shot. Whereas he had it fired and bolted and then fired again off. Oh, we had to do it just keep pressing. We could get eight miles off, or he could only get maybe two off at the same time. Did you have any other equipment besides the gun? Did you have any other equipment besides the gun? Not combat equipment, no. I had other equipment, of course. What was your unit like? And how were your officers? Okay, Matt. Why don't we go back here? Okay. When you were, go ahead. When you were wounded, can you, can you tell me the story of how you got wounded? Well, it was, we were just, we were on the move. We were moving, and uh, we were going through this wooded area, and uh, it was just getting dark. And uh, 
I heard uh, what sounded like, like a breech block. You know what a breech block is? Did you ever see a picture of a, of a guy firing an artillery, artillery gun where they push the, the shell in and the block in the back goes up? Well, that's a breech block. And I heard that a breech block go up and I knew there was something up there that I wasn't going to like. And I looked up the road and there was a tank up the road about 200 yards. And he fired about three or four rounds at us. And that was it. <laughs> I was never unconscious. But I was, I was in, on one side of the road and I was knocked to the other side of the road. And he, the tank must have backed off because there was medics up there pretty quick. And there were six of us. We were scouting a company, and uh, all six of us got wounded. Was anyone killed? Yes, three guys were killed. I don't know who they were, though. I couldn't name them now. Three out of the six got killed, and the other three, that was one of the three that they get killed. What was your daily life like? And did you go for any training? And where were you stationed? We trained in Camp Boomer, Oklahoma. That's where the division. I was in the 42nd Division, which now is the New York State National Guard Division. And, uh, but we had different regiment numbers. Like I was in the 222nd Regiment, but now the 42nd Division is, I think, it's not the 222nd, 232nd, or 242nd anymore. It's something else. Officer, what were your duties? Well, my duties were to keep 11 guys and myself doing what they were supposed to be doing. What was your unit like? It was a, just a typical infantry company. And, uh, I think the morale was always pretty good. How were your officers? Most of them were good, and some of them were bad. Did you like most of them? Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, when did your unit get to your? November 1944. Okay. Well, we uh, we went in through southern France. And uh, we went into the city of Marseille, and before we got there, the ship couldn't go in the port because when the Germans evacuated Marseille, they, they sunk every ship in the harbor, right? they, and they plugged the channels. You know what I mean? But it was all the, they just sunk a ship across the channel. So there was a big breakwater, and our ship tied up on a breakwater, and we walked in a breakwater. And an interesting thing was when I came home, I went through the city of Marseille too. And by that time, every ship in the harbor that was sunk was cleared out. So they, the engineers did a good job there. They cleared the harbor right out. And then we went up to, uh, the armies were moving so fast. The Seventh Army was going so, so fast north that we, we'd gotten, no, was it trucks or, yeah, we got in trucks and we met them. We caught up with the 7th Army in Dijon. That's a city uh, almost in northern France. And that's when we started getting into combat after Dijon. We went east and almost immediately we started meeting resistance. What actions were you in during the war? Well, I gave you the camp. I gave you the campaign. Was there any other actions that you were in? No. Okay. Can you describe the campaigns that you were in? Well, I mean, most of the campaigns are alike. They're just, they're just in a different area. They shoot at you, or you shoot at them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, there's a lot, but I, I just can't recall now. 
What were your What were your experiences? In what way? Combat experiences. Uh, yeah. What were your experiences in combat? Well, hard to say. You're just careful all the time. You learn how to duck. Did you receive any decorations, medals, or commendations? Yeah, I did. What were they? Let's see. I got a purple heart. I got a, uh, a bronze star. Combat infantryman badge. Now, when you, if you're in, if you're in the infantry, when you go to train and you finish your training, you get a little, you get a little badge. It's got a rifle through it. And then, when you go in combat, you get a, They embellish that with a wreath around it. And they call that a combat infantryman badge. Now, if you talk to an infantry soldier, he's probably more proud of that than he is a purple heart or a broad star and stuff like that. Because that signifies that you've been, that been an infantryman and you were in combat. Now we're all combat infantrymen get that badge. And you've probably seen it many times and then realize what it was. Can you describe, can you describe your medals on the Well, Like what was the broad star? The broad star was uh, I think I helped the guy across the river. And uh, he was in the middle of winter and it was cold and he, he lost all his and he couldn't get across. So I yanked, I pulled him across. And that's why I got it. What was the most interesting or inspiring thing that you experienced during your service? What was the most interesting or inspiring thing that you experienced during your service? That's hard. I really don't know. Can you tell me just one thing that was that inspired you? Do you remember one thing? Well, we had the ability to just go do something. And, and, and not worry about getting killed. And you usually, you just wait. You, you're in a position and things happen. And you, you wait them out. But after a while, you, you sick of waiting. So you just do something. And then when you're all through, you say, God, what did I do that for? No. It's hard to say things. What person or person do you remember best from your service and why? Well, I can remember a lot of people from my service. But we had a we had a young guy in our in our platoon that uh, was, a, was a tremendous soldier, and he eventually got a battlefield commission. He didn't have to go to officer's training school. They just pinned the bars on and said, you are not a lieutenant. But this, this guy was, he was crazy. He wasn't crazy, but he just, he didn't ask you to do it. He did it himself. Why do you remember him? Because he I became a close friend of us. And uh, in fact, we wrote to each other after the war about a couple of years, and then we stopped writing, and I don't know where he is now. Do you remember any of the people besides? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I remember a lot of people, but I can't tell you about all of them. I don't have that much time. Yeah. What, what 
What experience or experiences left the greatest impression on you? I mean, being in the infantry is so repetitive. You know, almost anything you do, you do every day. Over and over and over and over. Did you perform any unusual service or duties? Any, any unusual service? Yeah, or duties while you're in the war. Not really. I just did mostly what everybody else did. What effect? What what impact or that we What impact or effect from the war? What impact or effect from the war from military career has had on you? Well I always I always, I always felt that I did my duty. You're kind of corny, I guess, to say it that way, but that's the effect it had on me. And I know, you know, I know that there was not much harder duty than what the guys I served with. Where were you, where were you when the war ended? Uh, I was in uh, 23rd General Hospital in Battelle, France. Still in the hospital. Um, Want to know where I went from there? Okay, where did you, from when the war ended to when you got home, where did you go? Well, I went to, uh, I, I rejoined my unit uh, who were in Austria. Austrian Alps. And from there, we sent a regiment of the 42nd Division went to Vienna, and we co-occupied Vienna with the Russians, the French, and the English. So we were in a city that was like Berlin. And we stayed in Vienna So mid-October, and then I was, because I had a lot of months, see I spent, before I joined the 42nd Division, I spent uh, 18 or 19 months in the Panama Canal Zone. So I got two points for every month I spent on there. So I had enough, I had an 85-point system where if you had 85 points at the end of World War II, you'd go home earlier than anybody else. And I had over 100. So I would take it at uh, So I started on my way home in October. Okay, good job. Do you have any applications during the war before you went home? Did you do anything unusual before you went home? Uh, after the war ended? Not really. It's lived a normal soldier's life. Can you talk about the eagle's nest? And well, the eagle's and nest was, a, was just something dug right out of the top of the mountain. It was like a big concrete event. They had, they had uh, big open windows. They were no even you know, I had a beautiful view. And um, when we got up there, it was everything in the place was taken out. I don't know who got it, but. Yeah. Not really. I know I haven't been to. <laughs> I told you much. But. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, kids. Okay. For Thank listening. You. Thank you.